it says I'm live. Woohoo! <sighs> Let's. I'm just going to add a comment to my own live video. So exciting. Right. Let me just see if I can find me on YouTube. I can't believe. Yes, I've gone live. Woo woo. Hello. Um, right. I'm just, I, yeah, can't believe it. Um, but we're live. So hopefully, hello, Kay. This is my first live on YouTube. Morning, everyone. I can't believe that this is actually happening, but it is. I'm just going to adjust the camera a little. Um, I should have put my glasses on because, in fact, let me get my glasses. <sighs> I can't read the screen without my glasses, so I'm going to have to remember that for my next one, I bring over my bifocals. Anyway, hello, Kay. Hello, Claire. Hello, hmm, not sure who Ronit59 is as a name, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, calm. So what's interesting is that the screen is a different, the camera is, uh, never mind. Anyway, hello, Tamara from Amsterdam. Good morning. Yes, Kay, live on YouTube. I'm going to be doing more of these. Um, I'm hoping, I know I keep saying this on Facebook as well. I am hoping, fingers crossed, that um, I'm going to be able to work out how to use a, some streaming software, which I think might be easier on YouTube, um, which means I can do picture in picture and all that sort of stuff. I'm not an apple girl. I think apples are lovely as a fruit, uh, not so good as IT stuff. So I don't use um, any iPhone stuff. So I don't use Switcher Lab or any of those things, which you have to pay for, by the way. Um, and the software that I'm looking at, you don't have, excuse me, you don't have to pay for. So there are benefits. Anywho, uh, it's Veronica. Hello, Veronica. And from California. Wow. Did you not go to bed last night? Or is this wee small hours of the morning? And I'm so sorry about what's going on in the capital. Good grief. That was, I, yeah, anyhow, um, dreadful thing to say, but when, when the news broke last night, my husband and I said, well, at least it's not Brexit or the coronavirus. Um, but, oh, good grief. Awful, awful, awful pictures. Um, whatever one's political views are, that should not happen in a, dem in a democracy. Anyway, um, off politics. Dogs woke you. It was awful, awful. I just, my heart bleeds for you. I, I just, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so your dogs woke you. Obviously, your dogs are fans of mine. Um, so I've got a project planned. Haven't made it. This could go horribly wrong. Um, but it's been a busy week because, as you may know, the new catalogue has gone live. And I can now show you the new catalogue or the inside. So we've and it's celebration. So it's amazing. And you're an Essex K. Oh, so it's going to be chilly with you. It's I think today in Oxfordshire, we've got a high of freezing, um, which for anyone who lives in a cold climate would go pff, freezing. Pff. Um, in the UK, that's quite cold. And it's also foggy, which means it's damp, which means the cold really gets into you. Um, so, yeah, not great. And we've got a bit of mist and it's just not a pleasant day um, for a whole host of reasons. But that in particular. Anyway, procrastination is one of the things I'm really good at. So I'm going to stop and flip the camera down. Um, I'm going to talk about some ordering specials. Uh, which anyone who caught me on Facebook yesterday will already know about, but I just thought I would let you know. 
from a bar, a home in Leslie, you've got no heating. Is that because it's not working or because you just don't have heating in your house? Uh, we tend to not have much of our heating turned on and it didn't come on this morning automatically. It had an error, which fortunately we've managed to fix, but bleh. I grew up in a house that had no heating. So yeah, not great. Hello from to Germany, Kansas, good grief. Lots of people awake early. When you were taking taking your daughter to work, it was minus three. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that it's above freezing yet. The car, the frost on the cars would suggest it's not. Uh, it's not above freezing yet. Oh, it's broken, Leslie. Oh well, I hope you get it fixed soon. Not a good time to have problems with your heating. And Ria from the Netherlands. Wow, so many people jumping on. I'm thrilled. Anyway, let me flip the camera around. As I've said to those of you who joined earlier, I am hoping that I will be able to get some streaming software working, which means we can do picture in picture and all those sorts of things. Um, but in the meantime, who knows? Um, hello, Suzanne from Washington State. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, you do not want to be in DC. So um, I don't have a moderator. I might get one. Uh, so if there is any trolling going on, I'm going to have to deal with it myself, um, which may distract me a little. Um, but what I'm hoping is that my husband might possibly do it for me. But anyway, um, we'll worry about that as and when I get any trolls. I do have trolls, um, particularly ladies with very, who are very well endowed, seem to leave messages on my YouTube, um, videos and I then just delete them and block them and report them. Um, but obviously I can't do that at the same time as crafting, but I will do my best. So I've got my really tatty piece of washi tape, which I will cover you up and flip you around. And this is where I get it going the wrong way, but we'll give it a go. Okay, let's do the uncovering and some readjusting. Right, actually that's not, oh, you're, it's the wrong way round. Ooh, I wonder if I can do anything about that. Ooh, ooh. Um, can I flip the camera round? I don't think I can. Um... Okay. Oh, it's the right way round for you. Thank you, Kay, because for me, it's the wrong way round. We've got, I don't know how you say ladybird backwards, but that's what we've got. Super. I'm, I'm so pleased. It's my first live. The difficulty with doing YouTube live is you don't get to practice beforehand because, well, I've now discovered that you can because you can do it as a private. Uh, so I'll be doing that to practice my um my stream program, but um, I didn't realize that until I went live. Anyway, so we're using the Dandy Suite, Dandy Garden Suite today. Um, any demonstrators will have seen it for a while. Um, it starts on page 24 of the new catalog. Um, anyone who uh, is um, interested in how I got my catalog bound, Apparently not very well. As I did it myself, I've got a little, um, I mean, tiny binding machine. So I did do it myself because obviously there isn't anywhere open at the moment to do binding. Um, but yeah, someone contacted me yesterday after my Facebook Live. I seem to be on camera all the time at the moment. Um, and that's how I did it. Anyway, so this is the, the suite of products. Uh, it goes over to page 25. There are memories and more cards. Um, two um, stamp sets. There is some laser cut paper, which I will actually show you uh, just so that you can see it. Um, it is lovely, but it isn't, there isn't very much of it, is all I would say. Uh, there's two sheets, um, but this is the size. So it's, it's not even, it's not even 10 by 10. So let me, expose them. In fact, probably the best way is for me to do that. So this is one. So we've got lots of card fronts. These I would um, would 
suggest are sized for US size card. Yeah, they will fit on European, well, rest of the world size card, but they are sized for um, North American letter. Then we've got some little filigree bits there. And then this piece is different. Um, and again, we've got a card front and then some, some other bits. So we've got some labels, um, some dragonflies, etc. Uh, but it's not a huge amount, uh, is all I would say. It's lovely, but there's not much of it. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that because it's not very clear in the catalogue. Um, so it's important, I think, that you know this. Uh, the paper is six by six. Oh, and I have got, if I can find them very quickly for you, the um, Memories and More cards and envelopes. So let me see if I can find... Yes, they were where I was expecting them to be. So these are the cards and envelopes, which, again, I don't think are brilliantly shown in the catalogue. Um, so I do want people to see what they are getting. As you can tell, I haven't even opened it. They, they would be gorgeous with blending brushes. Absolutely. Um, the laser cut. So these are all printed uh, and they're all printed the same. So it's one design. It's, it's very pretty. I was going to say I might use it today, but then again, I might not. What size are they? Ooh. They are sizeless in on the packet, and they are six and a quarter by six by four and a quarter. Oh, of course, because they're used for the memories and more cards. Duh. Uh, and the envelopes are printed on the outside and on the flap, so that's the inside of the flap. So they are quite pretty. Um, if you wanted to make lots of quick cards, they would be a great way to start because a lot of the work has been done for you. But as I say, we won't use those today because I have actually sort of planned what I'm doing. Right, okay, so this is the, the first kind of, this is everything in the suite page. And I'm not using the linen thread. I'm actually going to be using thread from, um, Oh, it's the annual catalog and I can't remember where it's from now. So this is the stamp set I'm going to be using. There are dies that go with it, um, which I am not using uh, because I don't want everyone to always assume that you have to use dies. So I'm not using them this morning, but they are beautiful dies. I have done something with them before. Hello from Perth in Western Australia, Margaret. 33 degrees. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I could do with that today. <laughs> quite Leslie don't rub it in but hey uh hello from Patricia in Melbourne Victoria Australia um and this is the other uh stamp set I love this um there's a punch for the dragonflies which I will be using um but yeah so that that's everything that's in the suite let me get rid of that it is very disarming that um everything's the wrong way round Thank you, Kay. That's lovely. So um, very quickly, and I don't want this to become a sales pitch because that's not what it's all about. But I am doing an ordering special for those of you in the UK uh, for January. So if you use the host code here, which is everywhere on my website and Facebook page and all that good stuff, and it will be in the description bar for this video. Um, so if you use this and place an order of at least £50, you will get from me as a gift. Uh, take your pick tool. Um, you want to order all the new punches, don't we all? Um, so yes, the take your pick tool will be sent to you if you use this host code when you're ordering and place an order of at least £50. Um, it won't be that take your pick tool because that's grubby, but you get what I mean. And if you spend £75 in one order, 
you will also get the PDF and video for how to make this little uh, picnic basket. Um, so quite cute. And this uses one of the celebration uh, bundles, which is the sweet berry. She says, trying to find it. Berry Blessings, which is the one that comes with the paper. Um, it's a level two stamp set, so it's a £90 order in the UK. Um, but yeah, so it's a, a level two. Right, so that's, that's that. Sales pitch over. Um, so I have got ready, well, I say ready, <laughs> let's use the word loosely. That's to remind me that I'm using that ribbon. So we've got a piece of the paper and I'm using what I would call the B side, which is this all over pattern in Calypso Coral. Little, I, as you know, I like making little boxes. Oh, and it's th 73 degrees expected in California. Thank you very much, Veronica. People are grinding it in, aren't they? Um, I've got a Calypso Coral card base. I've got some scraps of um, Mossy Meadow because that's the green that's in the paper. Um, so I know it's going to work. Um, and I've also got a uh, Mossy Meadow base, uh, as in matte, plus a piece of Whisper White. I will be using some blends. Uh, the, the yellow in the paper is Bumblebee, which we don't do uh, in blends. So I'm going to use Daffodil Delight. Uh, you could use Daffodil Delight or Mango Melody. In fact, I might get Mango Melody as well because it's a slightly deeper shade. Um, oh, and I'm going to be using some of the in colour enamel dots uh, in Bumblebee. And I'm just going to turn my heater off because it's making it all very stuffy. So, because yes, I have got to have a heater because it's so cold here. Um, I'm going to start with my piece of Whisper White and my big dandelion stamp. So this one here. Uh, these are shown at scale. So these are the full size. Uh, and I'm going to be using the wishing you all the best um, sentiment. So let us get started. I've got, I've got gilding flakes everywhere. That's, that's icky. I'm going to start by cleaning my stamp, which has got, I don't know what on it. It looks like... Um, Looks like embossing, buddy, but I don't think it is. Anyway, so do let me know. New blends as well. Well, celebration is the time to buy them, uh, Leslie. Hello, Deborah. Morning. So, um, memento. Just stamp it all with some memento. I do tend to do a bit of a twist just to get the ink going and then pounce. And then I want to keep this reasonably straight to the card because I want to just cut, use a side that's not got a blemish in the middle of it. Um, I want to use, I want to just cut this down rather than having to do anything much more exciting. In fact, I go a little bit higher up. So I like to hold my stamps in place for a while simply so that the ink has got some chance of um, transferring across. Oh, and I've just seen, there's a little thing that says how loud I am. Ooh, gosh, today's a school day. So there we are, nice crisp image. Uh, I'm gonna leave that to dry for a moment and grab another piece of Whisper White scrap. She says, yep, I have got a piece of Whisper White scrap while I do the uh, sentiment. And the reason I'm, whoops, the reason I'm leaving this is so that the memento's got a chance to dry. Um, although it is perfect for using with blends, um, if you use it while it's still wet, it will smudge. So there we go. Oh, that's not brilliantly done. Luckily, we have an emergency side. So I'm going to clean that off. It's got fluff on it from somewhere, probably off my coat. I say coat, it's a jacket thing. Um, 
So let's try that again. And this time, let's try not to smudge it. That's better. Let's clean that. I'll clean the other one later. So that's all I need my memento for. So I can pop that to one size side. Now I'm using um, this punch and I can't remember what it's called. It's the label me something because they're all label me something. And I think it's going to be, oh no, it's going to be all right. So I'm just going to, actually it's a little, a little bit too long. Let's trim a piece off, which of course now means it's going to be too short up and down. But hey, so I want that to be as near to the middle as possible. Yep. And it's the one that does the the slit and the hole. Um, so as I said, I'll list everything. I will put this video up on my website. Um, so I'll have a shopping list so you can see what I've used. Now, for those of that's obviously the wrong side. For those of you that have seen me before, um, surgery. So I am going to trim by hand because I'm reasonably confident the top and bottom off the punched eye, uh, area or punch even. Now, two things with this. A, make sure you're using scissors you're comfortable with. And then when you're cutting, you need to ignore the scissors. So get them lined up and then look at where you're cutting to, not what you're cutting. Um, that way it kind of just works. Whereas if you look at where you're cutting, it you can go off. Uh, this was something I learned when I was at fashion college, when I was doing pattern cutting. Uh, you look at where you're going, not where you are. Don't <laughs> label me fancy. Thank you, Kay. I knew someone would know. So we've got this smaller piece. Um, so it won't be as intrusive. Now, I am going to trim this down before I colour it on the basis that then if I make a mess of trimming it down, I can just restamp it without having to worry about. See, that there is quite... I don't know if it is still, yes, that's still a bit damp. So all I'm going to do, I'm not, you know, getting excited about the measurements as such. Um, in fact, I'm going to trim this side down first, just a little. I'm comfortable that it's square within the piece of paper. Uh, so I'm comfortable that I'm just trimming it down. But um, I just wanted it nearer that edge. And I think, therefore, that I can go for two inches. Yeah, maybe. I'm going to trim a tiny bit more off here. As I say, this is a real do it by eye. Um, I will give you the measurements once I've finished, but. Um, in the meantime, I am just doing it by eye. So I am cutting it two inches. So that's spare. And then I'm going to I'm going to leave that as it is. And then I'm going to come in at four and a half inches as much as anything, because it's an easy measurement. So for those of you in metric, that's 5.1 centimeters and 11.5 ish, just under. But I will, as I say, I will um, give you those in on my website. I'm going all fluffy now, aren't I? Anyway, uh, right. So I'm going to cut this as well. So I know that this is two inches wide and I know it's four and a half inches long. So I'm going to start by cutting it down to four and three quarters. And then two and a quarter. So I'm going to have an eighth of an inch on each side as my border when I come to sticking them all together. Um, and then I want this to be a mat on top of this. We're going to have lots of layering. So I normally do my normal size mats are three and seven eighths by five and five eighths. So I'm going to come down three and seven eighths. Three and three quarters. I'm going to come down quite a lot. I'm going to go three and a half. So I'm coming down three eighths of an inch. So three and a half. 
by five and a quarter. So there are going to be quite wide margins on each side. Good morning from Western Australia, 6.21 p.m. So what we've now got is a nice wide margin here. And then we'll have a reasonably wide margin there. This will then layer there um, and we'll pop my, my sentiment will go here uh, and there'll be ribbon <laughs> and dots. So let's get coloring. Um, I'm a bit of a, you know, if in doubt, just splodge it colorer. Um, I managed to break my misty, dark misty moonlight. So um, I have to force the tip out. So don't drop things and then tread on them. So I'm trying to read these the messages as well. Um, Kay, you're being an absolute star welcoming everyone. Thank you. So this is the light misty moonlight. Uh, you can use old olive, um, which is much the same tone um, if you want. So if you don't have misty moonlight, don't feel you have to have misty moonlight. Now, when it gets to this bit here, it's all a bit it's all a bit jumbled. Um, so I'll do that. Finish that bit off last, because what I'm probably going to do is just assume it's all green um, and I'm deliberately not colouring beautifully. Uh, so I will be leaving some white because that's kind of the style of the suite. Um, let me grab another of the bits of paper. So here, can you see it's all a bit, you know, random. Um, so I'm going with that style. Oh, and of course, I've got some dragonflies to punch out as well. Ooh. So we'll have lots of things to play with. So this is a real, you know, just loose colouring. Um, and apart from anything else, if I do it loose, then it's less boring for you guys. Um, hopefully, if I can get this streaming software to work, I would be able to zoom in at this point. Um, you're crafting while watching, Leslie. What a very good idea. Now, that is definitely leaf. And that's leaf. I think we've got some grass in here as well. It's a weed after all. Um, so that doesn't really surprise me. That's definitely leaf too. OK, so I'm going to do my stems or things that I know are stems in the dark simply so that I can distinguish them. And again, I'm not worrying too much about filling in all of the line. Ooh, now the, temp now the um, heater is off. The temperature around my knees is dropping significantly. So let me just show you where we are so far. I know that's not terribly well focused, um, but you get the idea. So I'm going to add a little bit of the dark to the dandelion leaves. And then I'm going to come back in with the light and do the grass and the kind of bottom area. So that's definitely a blade of grass, as is that, as is that. And I'm not worrying if I go outside the lines because this is a loose sketch. So I can be loose with my colouring. Anyone who has seen my um, projects before knows that I I do do you know precise colouring as well, but for this it's not required. And I'm just going to bring that up a bit at the bottom, just so that it's not solid white at the bottom. So I've just brought up a bit of a scribble there, and then I'll add some green here and here. And that, I think, is all we need the greens for. So I'm actually going to try Mango Melody Light for my first colour and just see. Yeah, it's actually quite light. I mean, it is the light one, but it is quite light. Let's go for the other end. Oh, 
Oh, I'm so pleased you like watching me. My mad corner of this planet that we're currently living on. This mad planet we're currently living on. So that's the light. And I think all I'm going to do is come in with a, just a little bit of the dark, just so that there's some... Now, obviously, you'll get a better look at this when you see the photos on my website, which will probably be sometime next week, actually. I say that only because I did a launch um, event on my Facebook business page yesterday and have lots of projects to share from that. I've shared some of those this morning, uh, but there's still some to go. So this is where we are. As I say, I know this is a bit fuzzy, but it's all very loose, nothing precise. And in fact, I didn't use the, uh, the Daffodil Delight at all. So let's pop those away before I add them to what I've used. So I need to just add this to this. I'm gonna use Seal for my white. Uh, Again, those of you who know me will know that I, I'm not a great fan of Tombow on Whisper White. Oh, thank you, Kim. Glad you like it. I say really quick, really easy. Um, I think this stamp set in particular is very useful for a new crafter. Uh, it's got lots of nice sentiments. Um, it's great for... Um, for the moment, because we've got maybe love for a true friend, uh, your act of kindness is like a breath of fresh air. I and wishing you the best is perfect. Um, at the moment, if at no other time, um, then this is when you should be sending um, cards to people. Leslie, have fun homeschooling the kids. I do not envy anyone that is homeschooling at the moment. Um, it's just oh. I cannot even get my head around what that must be like. Anyway, so yes, so I've used seal on that. I would also use seal on paper. Um, sometimes I use Tombow. I love Tombow, um, but it does sometimes just, I don't know, it not shows through. It just leaves a sort of sense. Well, I like it, Kay. Um, I prefer this one to the one with the dragonflies, possibly because one of the first stamp sets I ever got was Dragonfly Dreams. So I'm kind of, I'm dragonflied out a bit. Um, I don't dislike this, but I've kind of done dragonflies. So that's my mat in place. This I'm gonna pop up with dimensionals. Let's see if I've got the right ones to hand, I have. Now, at a pinch, you could use black dimensionals for this because it's a dark color. Um, I do like the black dimensionals. I'm not a fan of using white underneath a dark color. Uh, if you were Bruno Batucci, you would, of course, put about three times as many dimensionals on. I'd love him to bits, but good grief. Uh, actually, before I stick that on, I want to grab some ribbon because otherwise I'll forget. So this is from, oh dear, it's from the annual catalog and it comes with Old Olive as well and I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, it's this <laughs> and it's not on the ribbon set. Someone will know, um, but yes, I want this in place before I stick this down. So this is gonna go here and I've just got this because I want to tie a knot. Uh, so what I'm going to do is have that kind of roughly in place, line this up onto my grid paper, come in with my seal plus and add some seal plus where I want my um, ribbon to be. Seal plus is very, very strong and therefore is great for ribbon. It's good for boxes as well. And then just, ooh, I was off there. Come on. There we go. Now, what I tend to do 
Thank you, Kay, Ornate Garden. So pleased you're here for so many reasons, but telling everyone what I'm using is a perfect reason, an additional reason. So I've got my top folding card. I like top folding cards. They're better for my photography. I'm going to add some more Seal Plus on top of the end of my ribbon so that I know that is encased in adhesive. Then I'm going to come in with my uh, multi-purpose liquid adhesive, aka Tombow or green glue, and just scribble. And then making sure that I have got this with the fold at the top. Pop that down, get rid of that. And then this, I'm just going to feed underneath and tie in a half knot. Thank you, Selena, and welcome from Canada. It's things like I'm seeing everything back to front and you're seeing it the right way round, which I just was not, I wasn't expecting. Uh, I'm going to leave those tails. Um, so doing lives, I'm not too much of a, you know, that's not too much of a problem. I've been doing presentations for years. I, it was part of what I did when I was working in the city of London. Um, I, I did a lot of training, um, as in I presented a lot of training. Um, so the standing up and presenting isn't the issue. It's the technology. Um, so this I've done so that it's kind of even all the way round on the top, bottom and side. Then I can now trim my ribbon like that and bring in my sentiment, which I'm going to have so it's slightly overlapping the ribbon. Otherwise, it's going to leave a really nasty gap there. And I'm not into really nasty gaps. Um, from a scrapbooking point of view, you don't want what they call trapped trapped white space. And that would be trapped white space. It's not white, but because it's just there on its own. So I like to overlap things. So I'm going to pop a dimensional on that end. And then a little bit of glue on the other end. Take that off. And yes, this is the one that I got wrong earlier. For those of you joining late, it just got a bit fuzzy. I don't like fuzzy sentiments. So a little bit of glue. And then actually I might come all the way. Yeah, I might come all the way out to there. Oops. Right. Now, I have got, oh, right in front of me. Um, some of the mini dragonflies from it was it's this piece of paper which has got the blackberry bliss blackberry bliss yep blackberry bliss on the back let me see if I can find a full sheet now word of warning that's a full sheet word of warning um the large dragonfly and the small dragonfly do not line up together in the punch. The punch is top and bottom. Um, so don't go in to a large dragonfly expecting it to line up properly with a small dragonfly. It doesn't. So just a word of warning. If you want to punch them separately, you need to cut out the one, the little ones. So this I've just put on a piece of post-it note and punch that. I'm going to punch all three. I may not use all three. Don't need that anymore. So later today, in fact, after this, I will be busy making uh, welcome packs because I've had three new members to my team already. Yay! Um, one girl is really, really keen. Bless her. She's already set up a website hasn't got a starter kit yet but she has set up her website so yeah uh one of them is a returner which is great so one of my team who dropped and has rejoined um 
just want to make sure I haven't got any post-it notes on the back, just a little bit there. So yes, so I must make, finish off my welcome pack. So I've got most of it ready. I just need to do the card. Thank you, Kay. So I don't know that I want all three, but I'll see. Actually, I might. No, I might. In fact, I wonder. Let me let me just check something. That might work. So I want to use the, the in colour dots, but I also want to use the dragonflies. Let's combine the two. This is probably going to end up as, for those of you in the UK, a large letter. Just so you know, just a little bit of adhesive on the body. And then I'm going to drag that down a bit. So I don't think you can see that, but I've added just a slice, if you like, of, of adhesive. And then I can do that, do the same again. But yeah, once I've added the dots, I think we'll end up in large letter realm. And I will, because this is my first YouTube live, I'm going to do something on the inside. I know, fall over. Me stamping inside at this point. So again, just a slice, strip, whatever. And then this one, I'm going to have, will that fit there? Yeah, just about. So I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to put the adhesive further down uh, so that the body, the, the wings and what have you can be flying off. There we go. Right. Okay. Take your pick tool. Now, with these, you need to be careful that you go underneath. Otherwise, you can separate the top from the bottom, which is not a good look. Probably should have stuck that one on before I stuck the dragonfly on. Thank you, Kay. I just think it gives a bit more dimension. And I do like a bit of dimension on my cards. I'm very, very, very keen to get my big order. I placed a huge order. I mean, A for paper shares, but also um, my main order for the mini catalogue. I placed at stupid o'clock on the 5th of January. Um, and... Uh, it's still picking. Hello, Audrey. Welcome to YouTube and me. Um, right. OK, so I think what I'm going to do is just use the top of this. So I've not cleaned it. It's fine. Grab a piece of scrap paper, also known the bottom, known as the bottom of a shipping list, um, and my memento, and just ink that up. And I think we'll just have a bit of this one and all of that one, and we'll ignore, we'll ignore Macy at the bottom there. I like the idea of making bread. My husband's a very good bread maker. He just doesn't do it enough. And unfortunately, next week, we start our post-Christmas diet. So not really enough of that. Am I going to be, am I going to be really picky? Yes, I am. Don't like it. Not enough of the bottom of this. So we'll do it again. And I'll use the other bit as scrap. That's going to be better. That'll be better. Thank you, Lorna. As I was saying, the um, it's the technology that is more of an issue for me than the than the whole live bit um, because I'm not used to it. Now I'm probably going to prove here why you should wait 
uh, to do your to color um, because this isn't dry yet. But let's do the green bits and hope that the flower heads are drier by the time I want to colour them. So, yeah, not too bad. It's not a horrible black streak on my mango melody. And as I've got a little bit of the other flower head, I will colour it so that it's intentional as opposed to it wasn't meant to be there. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of the dark. And that is the liner. So again, I'm going to use seal um, because otherwise I get, it's, it's me. It's not the Tombow, it's me. I just have this, I know where I've put it if I put it. Um, people who have had my cards tell me that if I've used Tombow, they really wouldn't know, but I do. And that's the thing. So that can just go in there. I've done the inside of a card. Anyway, so there we go. That is our finished card. I'll do some close ups and all that good stuff for my your 10 minute workout. <laughs> I love that, Audrey. Um, I will do some close ups for my blog post for this. Um, and I will probably change the thumbnail if I can um, so that this is what's on the uh, thumbnail for the video. Um, but yeah. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, my next. Thank you, Kay. Um, my next YouTube live is going to be Saturday morning at 10 o'clock in the morning UK time. Um, so possibly not a great time for those of you in the States, but maybe a better time for some of you in um, Australia. Uh, but makes you think of summer. Well, yes, and we all need a bit of summer at the moment. It, it seriously is miserable outside my window. It's cold, it's frosty, but not in a good way, and there's mist. We can at least now get to the next door village. The flooding has gone. Um, the flooding is, we, we live, the two villages are either side of the floodplain for Oxford and Abingdon, which is the next large town down from Oxford. So if they've got too much water, they open the sluice gates to put it on the floodplain. Um, and that basically means that we can't get to our next door village without going on three sides of a square because we have to cross a bridge and there are only a certain number of bridges over the Thames. Anyway, so thank you very much indeed for watching me. Um, do stay safe, stay well. Um, I hope everything in the US calms down. I think things are beginning to come back to something approaching normality. Um, and I will look forward to seeing some of you on Saturday, I hope. Um, so bye bye. Now I've just got to work out how to end the stream. I think I just click the end of the stream button. Thank you. That I'm so pleased you all like it. See you on Saturday. Bye bye.